listening to the words of Jesus today in the gospel and our modern American Christian minds probably is shocking and startling the way we hear Jesus speak today. Jesus says, do you think I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Jesus, what did you come here to do? I came here to set the earth on fire. What about all this peace on earth? Aren't you the Prince of Peace? Why is Jesus talking this way? The theme for the readings this Sunday are, is that it's challenging to follow Christ. The theme that connects it all is this. Jesus is a fire that divides. So dare to be burned. Jesus is a fire that divides, so dare to be burned. I want to talk this morning about a very special woman who was born in New York City. Her name was Elizabeth Bailey, born August 28, 1774, raised in a Protestant home in the Episcopalian faith, and she grew up in around high society. Then she married at the age of 20, a man named William Seaton. William was very wealthy, he was a prominent partner in a merchant shipping firm. They married and had children, and then after eight years, William's health rapidly started to decline, so they moved from New York to Italy to move in with a family that they knew as old friends and business partners, the Felici family. The Felicis were devout Catholics, and while Elizabeth was there and her husband was trying to regain his health, she started to learn more about Catholicism and even go to Mass with the Felici family. Sadly, moving over to Italy did not do William any good, and he ended up dying within less than two years, leaving Elizabeth, a young widow, with their children. She returned back to New York City but with a burning fire in her heart to learn more about Catholicism. While she was in Italy, she had been writing a friend with these words. How happy would I be if we believe what these dear souls believe, that they possess God and the sacrament, and that he remains in their churches and is carried to them when they are sick. Oh my, how happy would I be, even so far away from all so dear, if I could find you in the church as they do, how many things I would say to you of the sorrows of my heart and the sins of my life. As she returned to New York, she began to inquire about Catholicism, and once her Episcopalian family members and friends learned of this, they began to berate her and ask her hostile questions about why she's looking into Catholicism. Even one of the young Episcopalian ministers who she looked to as a spiritual guide gave her a book that basically told her, if you follow the church that follows the Pope, then you're going to fall into the bottomless pit of hell. And this gave her great turmoil, and she would waver back and forth on whether or not she would join the church. Then one day, she reflects as she was in her Episcopalian chapel for Sunday service, she reflected this experience. I got, <clears throat> excuse me, she didn't do that. <clears throat> I got into a side pew, which turned my face toward the Catholic Church in the next street. And I found myself 20 times speaking to the Blessed Sacrament there, instead of looking at the naked altar where I was. At 31 years old, on March 14, 1805, in St. Peter's Church on Barclay Street, Elizabeth Ann Seaton became Catholic. And what immediately followed was the unraveling of her social life. Her friends in her church rejected her and shunned her. Family members rejected her. She was struggling to make ends meet. Her husband dead. The business failed. Raising the children as a widow on her own. 
So hostile did it get for her that even people within her former church community began to encourage parents at Elizabeth's boarding school to pull their children out because this woman's gone mad crazy. Eventually, Elizabeth had to take her children and leave New York City. She moved to Baltimore. Eventually, she would settle in Emmitsburg, Maryland, discovering a new vocation in her life, that of being a religious sister. She founded a religious community called the Sisters of Charity, and this convert started the parochial school system. And all the Catholic schools and the parochial system that we have in our country today is because of this woman who was canonized the first American-born saint in 1970. Jesus is a fire that divides, dare to get burned. And Elizabeth Ann Seton got burned and became a saint. Jesus' words in the gospel today really don't comfort us. Because you see, you and I in a modern American society desire something different. We rather desire to go along to get along. We don't want conflict. We don't want division. We certainly don't want it in our own marriages and in our families, under our own roof. And so we would prefer to not have conflict. We would prefer to not have opposition. But Jesus tells us very clearly as he tells his disciples, if you follow me faithfully, if you embrace wholeheartedly life with me, then your family will be divided. You will face painful opposition. A father will be divided against his son, and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother, and a mother-in-law against her daughter. Well, we know that's going to happen. <laughs> but the other ones are really hard to take. And Jesus is saying this is going to happen. Whenever we speak the truth about our faith, whenever we speak and live our faith fully in our lives, we will face certain opposition and division in our own families. When we speak the truth about the sanctity of all human life, that life is sacred in the womb and we denounce abortion as murder, we will face opposition. When we celebrate the overturning of Roe v. Wade, we will face division and opposition. When we proclaim God's truth that he created humanity, male and female, and that marriage is and only and ever will be between one man and one woman, that is for life, an unbreakable sacramental bond, when we speak that truth and live that truth, we will be opposed and we will face division. When we say that no, two men and two women cannot be in a union that is marriage, we will face opposition and division. When we see our children come home from school and college with their boyfriend or girlfriend and want to share the same bed in our home, we say, I love you, but not under this roof because you're not married and cohabitation is a sin. When we say that homosexual acts are grave sins, we face opposition. In our world today, when we see the gender identity crisis, as it's called, where a boy wants to be a girl or a girl wants to be a boy. We say, I love you, but I'm not going to deny your gender because that's a lie. God created male and female, two genders, clearly in our DNA. And all you have to do is look at your body and you have your answer. You're a boy or a girl, male or female. There's only and always ever will be two genders, clearly given to us by God, our creator, not three, four, five, or 50. When we say and speak and live these truths, that fire is going to burn. It's going to burn division in our lives. It may even cost us our lives, our jobs. We may find ourselves shunned from family, no longer invited to events and parties and baptisms and weddings. And Jesus says, I know, expect it, it's going to happen. But we want to go along, get along faith. 
And the churches and the Christian communities that grow in our nation are usually the ones that don't bring any opposition, non-denominational, non-committal, non-judgmental, non-whatever, no opposition. Because in our heart of hearts, we think we can find this place, this faith, this church, where I can be faithful to Christ and have no opposition, no division in my family, not lose any relationships over my fidelity to Christ. And Jesus is saying, that is not possible. It's not going to happen. In the end, Jesus calls us to great fidelity, saying even the, most, even the closest family ties and the closest of family relationships cannot be more important than your relationship with me or your faithfulness in following me. Jesus is a fire that divides. Dare to get burned. When we get close to that fire that is Jesus, we're going to get burned. And that burning will transform us. So what's left for us then? Jesus says this is going to happen to us. We face this division in our lives. What's going to happen to us? Jesus will be there for us. He was there for Jeremiah when they threw Jeremiah in the cistern, which is an old well in the ground. They were tired of Jeremiah prophesying the truth that the Babylonians were going to come and wipe out the Israelites and destroy the temple because of their infidelity towards God. And they wouldn't listen, and they were tired of listening to him, so they just wanted to, they wanted to off him, throw him in the cistern. And he was sinking, but God rescued him. And we hear the Psalm of David, Psalm 40, being the words of Jeremiah. The Lord heard my cry. He drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the mud of the swamp. He set my feet upon a crag. He made firm my steps. Jesus will be there with us in the face of opposition. In the letter to the Hebrews, we have our answer. Let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus is saying, when the cross of opposition comes to you, carry it with me. He will be there carrying the cross of opposition with us. And we will keep our eyes fixed on him. We will persevere. He will give us the strength in that struggle. The struggle is real as they say. Even in our own parish family, right here in this church, there are families among the six million converts to Catholicism in our country who have faced these divisions in their own families. I know one of our Knights of Columbus who converted from his Baptist faith, faith as an adult and his mother has rejected and disowned him. I know another family who we brought in in the spring, Church of God, all of them, and their family has rejected them and accused them of sending their grandchildren to hell. I've estranged myself from family relationships at home because I haven't attended weddings that I know to be wrong and acts of infidelity. We face division, we face opposition, and Jesus, Jesus is telling us this is going to happen. And so if we find this in our lives and we're suffering from it intensely right now, then Jesus is probably saying, don't think something's going wrong. Something might be going right. Because, uh, because in kind of, instead of keeping the peace, he chose to keep the faith. And so we know now that Jesus reveals to us that he's a fire that brings division. So dare to be burned. Like St. Elizabeth Ann Seton dared to be burned. To be burning in her heart with the love of Jesus. To face all family opposition 
and being canceled out of society, she moved forward without fear, found a religious order, and started the Catholic school system as we know it today. It's keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, he is a fire that divides. So let's dare to get burned. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.